Good evening. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church, those of you who are here, as well as those of you who are watching us online tonight. This service is a little bit different, and it harkens back to the ancient tradition where Advent used to be much more of a season akin to Lent. So tonight is a different night. It is a night for us to be together in the dark. But let's admit it. So often, darkness scares us. Darkness is our nightmare. We've been taught to fear it, to avoid it, to keep the lights on, to think happy thoughts, to pretend everything's all right, and to not go into that dark place. Yet here we are tonight in the dark because God created light and dark, day and night, and said both were good. To fear darkness is to miss what we can see there that we can't see clearly anywhere else. So here we are. We are in the dark. Will you say that with me? Here, here we, we are. are. We, we are, are in, in the, the dark. dark. We are here to acknowledge we are in the dark about so many things. We have so many unanswered questions. We have so much fear and sorrow we can't make sense of, tucked away in secret places. And for some of us, we have fresh grief that's raw and feels unending. Here we are. We are, we are in, in the, the dark. dark. We can hear in this night an invitation to not run so quickly to the bright, shiny objects, to easy answers, and loud, well-lit rooms. This sacred darkening makes room for all of who we are, for our laments and longings, our confessions and our cries. This darkness can help us see what we cannot see in the light. This dark and holy night can perhaps even be a night where dreams are dreamed. Hope can be born. Here we are. We are, we are in, in the dark, dark. and God, God is, is with, with us. us. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. shouldn't be 
Tonight, we will be participating in the long-standing biblical tradition of lament, the practice of mourning for all that's wrong and crying out, crying out to God and with God to make things right. Yes, with God. One of the things we learn from scripture is that God also laments. The prophet Ezekiel tells us that God has a scroll filled with God's own handwritten words of grief and sorrow. So we do not lament alone. One of the ways people express their laments in the Bible was by rending, by tearing their clothes. David does it when he hears of his daughter Tamar's rape, and when Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. Job did it when he pretty much lost everything he owned and everyone he loved. Clothing was an extremely valuable and limited resource in those days and not something that was easily replaced. So when they ripped their clothes to shreds, it spoke volumes. It was a way of physically expressing the pain they felt. Inside, a way of saying, I am torn up. My heart is ripped to shreds. This is the sound of our sorrow as we wait and wait and wait for God and what's broken to be made whole. And yes, sometimes the wait seems so long, too long. And we feel like the writer of Psalm 22 who cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken us? Where have you forsaken us how can we go on as the woman who has lost her child and a man who lost his way there's a boy who's keeping it inside and a girl who cannot pray why have you forsaken us for your face we search for your grace we want to follow your way why have you forsaken us where have you gone there's a man who says 
says he cannot breathe and another with a gun there's a family who's left everything just exiled on the run why have you forsaken us where have you Throughout worship, we want to offer you the space for lament and prayer. Scriptures and music will guide us through this time tonight. Along the way, we'll offer you several opportunities to write down your laments on those strips of cloth. One of the things we learn from reading the Psalms and the prophets is that we don't have to protect God from our questions and our cries. Our prayers don't have to be neat. They don't have to be nice. And we don't have to hold anything back. In this time of prayer, we'll also be inviting you to tear the cloth that you have as a way to help us all remember what's been lost, what's been ripped and torn this past year. Torn the things in our own lives and our world it can't be easily repaired or replaced. We'll also have a sung response repeated for this time. We'd love to have you sing along with us. And it goes like this. Let's begin. O oh God, your dream was of a world that was safe and life-giving. So we cry out to you, for this has not been our reality, especially in the midst of this pandemic. We cry out for all the lives lost this year, those known to us and those unknown. From the people down the street, to those across the world. We cry out for the loss of our loved ones, who we name aloud at this time. Bobby. Okay. We grieve as well, the loss of even being able to grieve in the ways we have before. 
We cry out because it's so easy to lose hope. In the next few moments of silence, we invite you to write down your laments for the lives lost this year. You can write your laments on one of the pieces of cloth you've been given. If you are worshiping virtually, you might play music softly while worshipers write their prayers. Hear these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I harbor sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart, day after day? I invite you now to join me in tearing your piece of cloth, the one on which you have just written your lament. God, you dream of a world where we can all be together in body and spirit to share meals and laughter and embraces. So we cry out to you because that has not been our reality this year. We weep for the loss of relationships, for the loss of routine and normality and the ability to be physically together. We weep even for the loss of trust that the world is a safe, good place. We are in turmoil, and peace seems like just a memory. In the next few moments of silence, we invite you to write down your laments for the loss of all these things we used to depend on and expect. You can write them now on your next piece of cloth.
Hear these words from Jeremiah 8. No healing, only grief. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people all across the land. I invite you now to tear your piece of cloth, the one on which you have written your laments. Remember when we saw the boy washed up on the shore, the girl torn from her parents' arms. Remember when we heard 16 shots in the night, no justice for that lie. We want to know where you were. We want to know where you to know what you do. God, you seem so far away. We want to know where you were. We want to know where you are. We want to know what you do. God, you seem so far away. Remember when we saw the unloved daughter and son abandoned Oh God, you dream of a world where there's mercy and kindness and justice and joy and enough to go around. So we must weep tonight for all the lives lost and hurt 
because of the racism and injustice and the fear of strangers and difference in this country. The list of lame names is long and somehow still keeps getting longer. If you would like to list some people specific to victims of racism, exclusion, and injustice in our country, we invite you to say their names out loud at this time. In the next few moments of silence, we invite you to write down your laments for the victims of the fear and hatred, greed and exclusion that continue to devastate our country and our world. Hear these words from Jeremiah 31. A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. I invite you now to join me in tearing your piece of cloth, the one on which you have just written your laments. Oh God, you dream of a world where wrongs are acknowledged and righted and restoration is possible. So tonight, we must cry out to you and confess that we have too often ignored the wrongs in our country, our neighborhoods, our own hearts. But our eyes have been opened wider this year And what we see hurts. It hurts. And it's hard to confront what's broken within us and around us. And to find the courage to make amends and make things right. Hear our prayers and forgive us. In this time of silence, we invite you to write down your confessions and prayers for forgiveness and change.
Hear these words from Psalm 102. God, listen. Listen to my prayer. Listen to the pain in my cries. Don't turn your back on me just when I need you so desperately. Pay attention. This is a cry for help. I invite you now to join me in tearing your piece of cloth, the one on which you have just written your prayers.
pulse is packed or the strings of light are broken. I don't care if the gifts are wrapped or there's nothing here to open. Love is not a toy and no paper will conceal it. Love is simply joy that I'm The carpet stain, we've got food upon our table. I don't care if it's gonna rain, our little room is warm and stable. Love is who we are, and no season can contain it. Love would never fall for that. We sing. so scared that you'll mess it up when perfection keeps you haunted all you need is your best my love that's all anyone ever wanted love is how we do let no judgment overrule it love I look to you and I We have gathered our ripped and torn hopes, our ragged laments. And look, together our laments have become something else, a beautiful advent wreath. We invite you to take yours with you to form your own wreath. A circle, perfect in shape, that reminds us of God's unending love, a love that cannot be canceled, a love that never fails. As we read in Romans 8, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we wait through all our dark nights, we can remember God's immense and unfailing love for each of us and for this whole aching world. A love born in Christ on Christmas. Let us pray. O oh God of big dreams, O oh God of big love, we look for you in this darkness of our despair, of our denial, of our disappointments. Even as we weep, we wait and hope and look toward Bethlehem. Help us, whether we can see you clearly or not, to follow you and to live your dreams, 
your fierce, brave, life, and joy-giving dreams, tonight and always. Amen. Go, trusting that in this darkness, even now, seeds are growing. Hope is being born, and new dreams are being dreamed. Go in the embrace of the God of powerful love, the Christ of humanness and vulnerability, and the spirit that is always, always with us and for us. Amen. Just 
Let us show you.